Hi everyone, welcome back to Sky Full of Stars, episode 38, and there isn't really anything else to do until the first light event. So one, the big Dobsonian telescope is complete, and in position, and adjusted, and two, the place that they're going to hold this event is all cleaned up, ready to go, and the tents and the benches have all been set up. So now it's just waiting for the sun to set and the stars to appear. And I'm sure Orhime, she's happy to see her ideas come to life. But then again, she feels that, well, it wasn't me that made it happen. It's Akito and maybe Hikari and Saya that helped make it come true. Because if you remember, in the beginning, Orhime wanted to put this idea forward, but because of her unreasonable ideas, many clubs backed out. But now, thanks to Hikari and Saya and Akito, they're back together again, and now they have six or seven different schools representing this big Six Stars Club. So let's see how this event goes, and what they're going to see with this big new Dobsonian telescope. So there's a special or natural phenomenon called twilight. So it's also when the sun has already set, but the skies are still lit with a soft glow. And it's the result of a rays of sunlight from beyond the horizon reflecting the dust and water particles in the air and getting scattered around. And there are three stages to twilight. So first there's civil twilight, that's when the sky is still bright. And next is the nautical twilight where the stars begin to emerge but still light enough to make out where the sky and the sea meet. Okay. And the last is astronomical twilight. So that's when it's dark. And at this stage, the sun's light is no longer visible, and the sky is almost completely dark. You can see the dimmest six magnitude stars with the naked eye. So astronomical observatories or observations can only be made after astronomical twilight. And after the last traces of day fade away and true night emerges, the area in front of Mizuki Station was abuzz with activities. So I have a feeling that this is when all the commuters get off work, they're trying to get home on time, and when the bus comes here, that's where you see a lot of businessmen get off the train and you know how it works. Oh, and plus some young school kids. So a number of young school kids were out in the plaza, a sight not normally seen here. And they were all here to join our event. So now today's special is that there's so many people that are going to participate in this event. So I wonder what Hikari had for dinner. She stuffed. So Hikari has shown up early and was lying on the counter in the cafe corner, rubbing her stomach. So I think she ate too much. So what did Hikari eat? So I so I think Hikari bought another big pork bun, and it was too much for her, and that's why she's like, well, it's my last chance, if I move, I won't have this again. But you aren't gonna move there for good, permanently. But still, it's gonna be quite a, a number of years before I can move back here. No, it's a miracle that there's any left at all, really. 
the sai had brought me one piece of konyaku, some chikuwa, and one slice of potato. Oh, so、um, Hikari went to that nice dinner with Saya, and Saya treated Hikari to nice odin, and Hikari ate pretty much all of it. And it was way too much because Saya was hoping to save some for Akito. There, that makes sense. Oh, and plus, um, Saya was hoping to share it with some other people as a side dish. So Onika came up to the counter with a basket full of food and drinks. All the stuff for tonight. And there's also stuff for the event guests, so it was pretty, a pretty impressive amount. Now while I was busy scanning things, more and more had begun gathering. It was cold out, and there was nothing much to do, so most made their way inside. So I wonder if they have enough stock to for all these customers.、Mm. And Takichi is here. I wonder why. Oh, oh you're here. <laughs> oh no, her again. Hey, what's with that reaction? Like, um, why are you looking at me like that? So I'm pretty sure it's because Takichi doesn't have a good impression of Hikari after what Hikari did in the past to him. But anyways, Saya kindly greets Takichi. Oh well, I'm interested in what's gonna happen tonight. So um, so Takichi was another one of our guests. Oh, so Taki, good timing. So um, can you carry some of the stuff? For us up to the mountains. So there were way too many bags for the girls to make it up the mountain without breaking their backs. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, it's bad to have guests help out. So、um, we can do it.、Um, we just need a little bit of time. Ah,、oh, he's there. Well, still, I think it's bad for. You girls to do all by yourself, so I should help. So he grabbed the bags as if they didn't weigh a thing. Well, then again, he's a basketball, or like he's part of the basketball club at school. So, what is it about showing off to Narie? So he turned to look at me, but I just ignored him and took care of the next customer in line. It's like, hey, um, Akito, did you say something very interesting to Hikari about me and Narie? Well, I think you did, and now I kind of feel embarrassed about all this. Hmm. So you must have a crush on Nari from Nishi High, and don't worry, we'll help make it come true. Um, just leave it all to us. No, no, no. That's not true. That's not. That's not true. Um, I swear. Come on, just let us know. How long have you known her? No, no, no. Well, I think he is shy. He's just trying to cover it up by acting all tough. In you can see that Takichi is looking elsewhere. And it looks like the former teacher Miharu notices Takichi. So our teacher peeked out from the back of the store and came rushing out at the sight of Takichi. Oh, a teacher.、Uh, what's up? Anta ni wa kashi ga atta wa yo ne. San nen sei no toki, anta ga oshikko morashita no. Minna ni wa damatte di atta desho. Oh, I didn't remember about you in the past. <laughs> the fact that you peed your pants in third grade, and、uh, you didn't want me to tell anyone. Anta oshikko morashita no. 
Oh, come on. Well, now you told everyone, so I don't, owe, I don't owe you anything. So hey, um, when am I gonna get my game back from you? Well, I haven't finished it because I've been at the casino a lot. And I wonder if Mihara's trying to use the casino to make money, because that's a very bad choice. You lose more than you make. And it's really hard to beat the odds unless you're really, really lucky. Or you can detect complicated patterns. Well, come on. I'm already being embarrassed, so just hurry up. And just as lazy in the game world as in the real world, I thought. Well, unfortunately, I have to do something, so how about you sit back and watch this shop? And hopefully, the grandmother does not get upset about this. So Takeichi turned up his nose at his former teacher begging to him. And the whole you're not busy thing was a pretty low blow as well on Christmas Eve of Null Nights. Well, I'm tired of my mom nagging me with um, the shopping stuff. And I have a feeling that you're not interested in stargazing. Well, unfortunately, I have some other work to do, so I cannot accept the request. Takichi and this. Well, said this with a determined look on his face. Hmm, so maybe you want to try to get closer to that Nare girl. No, 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 not that. Something else. Well, I'm sorry to say, I don't have time, so go find somebody else to watch the shop. So, I wonder what's happening. I think Mihara just wants to go see the stars and she can't find anybody to sit in for her. And it's like, um, how about Saya? No. So Saya shook her head fiercely as their eyes met. Hmm, so those plain eyes passed over Hikari, me, Honoka, and all the rest of the random people here, but no one offered. Hmm, I don't think Kotaro can help. Hey, the cash register was not made for pause. Though, you occasionally heard about dogs running these tiny cigarette shops, though. Hey, you shouldn't have been playing games on the job in the first place, right? And that's the real reason she couldn't go out. She was grounded like a child. So now you had to work out with the manager. Well, she complained about it and hung her head. So I think um, the grandmother's upset that Mihara wasted her time at the casino and playing other games instead of doing real work. And it's like, well, on Christmas Eve, you don't get the privilege of going out, so you're going to stay here. But things were starting to get really busy outside the store. And a quick glance, I counted about 20 people. And there were a few faces I recognized from school, some of the members from Nishi High that lent us the tents, and then some kids from other schools. Oh, so there you are, President. Yeah, Sorami-kun. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Oh, so the president of his astronomy club, and he never makes a face because he's about to graduate, and 
It's like, well, I'm busy with graduation. You can just do whatever, whatever you want with the astronomy club. Just keep it alive. He looked at me with a smile on his face. So like, um, so when he heard about this um, first night event, it's like, ooh, that, that's interesting. I want to see what it is. Maybe I can see all the proud accomplishments that Akito did in my absence. But you know, I'm about to graduate and I won't be a president anymore. So I want you to see me as a regular student. And or more like, a, well, that sounds too grand for me. I just want to be a, a regular student, so just treat me as a regular student. Well, if we get any new members, I'll think about it. But hey, um, oh, you see, you look pretty worn out. Well, so yeah, it's like um, he's busy with his senior year, and well, I hope the stars out there tonight put some life back in those eyes. And it looks like Katora is going to join in as well. Hey, um, you gotta be quiet though. So what's the matter, Saya? I think he's just getting excited because he's seen so many new faces. Ah, well, just let him be. He'll get tired of barking soon anyways. So, are you going to show up later then? Yeah, well, I can't check it out just yet. So I asked the manager to let me off early tonight. So he basically has to keep his job going before he can go with everyone else to look at the stars. And so I st still wouldn't make it in time for the start, the night was long. So I'm sure it's not going to end soon, so I can pop in when the event is in session. Okay, so go on ahead, um, make sure your card doesn't get out of hand. So make sure she doesn't get too crazy and such. Okay, so leave it to me. So I gave her a little wave and walked away. And then... So Amanogawa-san? Seeing girl I didn't recognize was calling out to Saya. So what do you mean? But you know, it's kind of special that you can talk to boys. So the Season Girls Academy, I'm pretty sure they're all... So it's an all-girls school, and I'm sure most of them don't really know how to interact with boys very well. And it does remind me of the Vince Ness Academy from Princess Even Child. And it is one of the main elements of that vision novel. So there must be girls that were using the Season Girls Astronomy Club as a cover for their comics club. So that's what Sai mentioned many episodes ago. It's like, uh, well, the reason they didn't join was because they weren't really an astronomy club. And because comics isn't really educational, that they use some other name to cover up. So Sai invited them out to try and get them into astronomy. It's like, well, how about you see what astronomy is like and go to this event and see all the good parts of being engaged in astronomy. But it looked like they came out just to admire and praise her. Kind of true. But I guess that's just what going to a all-girls school is like. So greetings could be heard throughout the crowd. So, five minutes or so after everyone had gathered, Honoka called everyone's attention. 
and they quieted down and gave their or like gave her their attention. So I'm the president of the Meiko Academy Astronomy Club. So now that everyone's here, we'll make our way slowly up the mountain to where our event location is. So all the Six Stars Club members were lined up with their hands raised so everyone knows who to listen to. And there were some first year from Nishi and Moromisawa, besides myself, Hikari, and the others. So everyone got restless at the words Christmas Eve. It was the same sky as any other night, but the words seemed to add an extra layer of excitement. And you also get a chance to use the telescope that we made to see parts of space that you cannot see with your own naked eyes. And you could hear people muttering in detail or in disbelief when they heard that we made a telescope ourselves. Well, that kind of is true. But... In an... So when people think of telescope, think of like the usual tube telescope. So I guess that was a natural reaction though. And it kind of explains why Orihimo was thinking about, well, telescope, that means buy new, commercially made. So to the average person, it probably didn't seem like the sort of thing you could make yourself. Even we didn't think we could do it at first. So let's get you a little bit excited. So um, I want to talk to you about that Christmas star. So everyone turned to where Honoko was pointing. So they all mutter to each other as they try to find them. So those who knew or who spotted them first started helping the others out until it seemed as if everyone had found it. So the Northern Cross. A voice from the crowd asked if it was the constellation Cygnus. Um, that's correct, the Cygnus. So based on the orientation of Earth and the star, you can see that the star is pointing in a different direction than it would be if it was summer. So during the summer months, Cygnus holds Alberio in its beak. But on Christmas, just around this time, it is known instead as the Northern Cross. It was named to be the opposite of the Southern Cross in the Southern Hemisphere. And it's just a special something for astronomy fans around Christmas time. So I'm pretty sure when Honoka mentioned the Northern Cross, it was just something to get them excited, get their hypes built up. And a little teaser for them before they head off to the real event. So I wonder if these people felt any sort of reverence when looking up at the cross in the Christmas Eve sky. Then, 
I guess those are some other notes. So in order to do astronomy effectively, we can't have stray lights anywhere, so less flashlights, less candles, less lanterns. So I'm sure for an average person, they don't know why. It's like, well, um, we have to let our eyes adjust to the dark. So our eyes don't let us see anything if we're just suddenly thrown into the, the dark. But give them some time and they'll adjust. Okay, that makes sense. And even the opposite is true. When you come out of a long dark tunnel, it'll take your eyes some time to get used to how bright it is outside. And that's usually true when you try to get up in the middle of the night wanting to go to the hallway and if you turn on the lights in the hallway, the light's so bright that you have to close your eyes for a moment or be in some dark corner and let your eyes adjust slowly to the light. And that's because our eyes are made to adjust to the light levels around us. There you go. And unfortunately, while they can't adjust to light in 4 seconds or less, they take 30 minutes or more to fully adjust to the dark. Yeah, that's true. That's why it's better to sit and have some preparation time. I remember going out to a really dark place at night during a camping trip that I had back in school. So this is what we call light and dark adaptation. And if you want to see the stars with their own eyes, the dark adaptation is incredibly important. And there's a whole world of difference in what you can see before and after your eyes have adjusted. So even if you spend half an hour getting used to the dark, if someone turns on a light, your eyes will reset in a matter of seconds. Okay. So in order for our eyes to adjust fully, we have to we have to be in a pitch black environment for 30 minutes non-stop. So I could turn to one of the lights covered in red. And just as you expect, it gave a red light. So why red? So red is easy on the eyes, it doesn't bother your adjusted eyes as much. So I think it's because red light, it has the lowest energy spectrum of all the other colors. And it's because, um, so it has, I would say like, um, it has long wavelengths, which means that the frequency is pretty low, and that means less energy compared to something like violet, which is very powerful, intense light. Um, that light has short wavelengths and high frequency. And I do. And I do remember that like our eyes work best when we look at green light or yellow light because it's right in the middle of the light spectrum. So it's like um, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Kind of like we see on the rainbow. So event programs had been prepared for everyone and handed out beforehand. So it's best to accompany or have someone accompany you. So Ikari piped in for an extra comment. So if any of you need hand warmers or anything, be sure to drop in to the convenience store here to pick them up before you go. And as soon as the words were out of my mouth, a number of people went into the store. So last minute shopping and such. 
And it looks like we be able to make our sales goal. Well, I don't think that's important right now. That's something else because the main event is the stargazing, not making numbers at this shop. Okay, I'll catch up with you later. Sure thing. So you keep an eye on them, okay, Takeichi? Oh. So he is carrying all the stuff I asked him to even Sai and Hikari stuff. As regular on the basketball team, he's definitely had some strength in him. Or to him. There you go. So following Honoka, everyone makes their way to the observatory. So I'm sure that there is a advantage for Akito staying behind and finishing his hours because he can serve all those last minute customers, people who want to buy some stuff before they go up the mountains. And there that way, um when Bihar takes over the shop all ungratefully, she won't have to deal with that many customers. And maybe she'll have some time to play her game that she has been thinking of. So let's see what's happening to Akito while he's working. Okay. So the event had already kicked off. And everyone kept messaging me about it. Well, I'm sure they're just thinking of me, but this is just making the wait even worse. So I wonder how many minutes Akito has left before it's the end of his shift and time for Mihar to take over. So I show my phone, or I shove my phone into the pocket with a sigh. So there was only 30 more minutes until my shift was up. Well, I'm sure 30 minutes can pass by quickly before he notices it. And the celestial bodies were shifting all the while ever so slightly. Well, no one mentioned the Dobsonian though. I wonder if it even works. Hmm, so maybe I should ask someone. Well, nah, I don't think um, it would help me relax, no matter what is the answer. So if they were able to use it, I would feel jealous. And if it doesn't work, or something went wrong, I definitely wouldn't be able to handle the weight. And I wouldn't really be doing my job either. Um, so I wonder what it will look like with an even larger telescope. So we all had such a big, wild imaginations as kids. And we talk about what we would do if we owned the Hubble, even though there was no chance in the world that would ever happen. But still, I thought about hooking an eyepiece onto it and looking through it with my own eyes. I would even think of how hard it would be to keep posture and look through an eyepiece out in space. Well, I'm sure that the Hubble does not have an eyepiece. And for big telescopes, it's too big to have an eyepiece, and they use computers to capture images instead. And all they have to do is just look at what images, or like um, they look at the pictures on their monitors. Well, I didn't think there was anything that the Hubble couldn't see. So the Hubble was definitely an impressive telescope, but it wasn't able to see the ends of space. And that's why NASA is looking at building a new telescope that's even bigger than the Hubble. And it will take several launches to put this thing together. So it wasn't quite the ultimate telescope that I always dreamed it was. And if you do remember, the Hubble required only one launch to bring it into space. And it was brought into space by one of the space shuttles that got retired almost 10 years ago. But even back then, 
the Alma was uncovering a number of mysteries of space. I just didn't realize back then there were different kind of telescopes, each with their strengths and weaknesses. Hmm, so how would our hunk of junk, Pledis 1, hold up? And what's in the cosmos would that big beast show up? Or show us? Well, I don't know if we can't see anything with it. So I think the biggest problem that Akito has with this thing is, or in general, is that I think um, the images may be out of focus. And if that's the case, then you can't see anything very clearly with this telescope. And as I mentioned before, that was the big problem that they had with the Hubble telescope when it first launched in 94. So we made it ourselves though. So I was sure it was not going to be the best quality. But that just meant it might give us a different look than what we were used to. So how would it feel looking through that telescope? How would it switch from an astronomer who never looks at the stars to just a normal astronomy club member again? Oh, so it looks like the manager is here. The grandma is like, wait, you're still here? So I wonder why she's giving him that of a surprise. Or like, why is she all shocked? So the manager seems surprised to find me. So what do you mean still? So I could see the clock and it was... So and it clearly wasn't the time to go yet. So I think it's like, um, well, I do remember that you have an event to go to, so why not go to that event and let my not-so-good daughter, Miharu, take over and finish up your shift? No reply. Uh, well, you know, uh, Miharu... Son is acting as an advisor, so um It's like well um you should go to the, that event. And um plus I really feel that our daughter needs to do some extra work and it's bad if you give excuses for her. So just go on ahead and go join up with her friends and go look at the stars. She said that she begin Fixing her apron. It's like, oh. Okay, don't worry about your shift anymore. And I wonder if she's going to give Akito credit for all those unworked hours. That'd be good, though. But I mean, um, I've been cutting down my hours as it is already. I'm just causing you more trouble. It's like, well, you know, um, I've already asked for um, reduced hours, and I feel like me not being here is hurting your business. But you know, you've already done a lot of work here, and I'm already appreciative of it. But I know that you have other things to do, like school and the club, so I want you to worry about those as well and not focus your whole life or your whole attention on this place. So, Move on, move on. Go, um, clock out. Oh, thank you so much. I'll just head right out then. So, I do know that Akito also wants some money as well because he is pretty poor and he spends most of his money buying instant noodles as his meals. And maybe some other toiletries. And I wonder if the grandmother is going to give Akito some compensation for that. Well, I think she already does. But anyways, he now gets to go to the event earlier than expected. So be careful. And so I made my way out a little earlier than expected. All this while feeling a little bad for our teacher. Well, it is her fault though. So the skies were just as clear as sighted text had said, it couldn't have been a more perfect night for stargazing. 
So I'm wondering what's going on. I think they're trying to debate on which stars to see first. So the winter triangle. And then hold on, let's see. So case K from the more Miso technical knew a lot about the positions of the constellations. And his absolute love of astronomy really came through in the way they spoke and captured all of the guests' attentions. And he even captured my attention. Okay, so I can remain time to hear this. So I wonder how much Akito missed. Okay. And of those, only, 11, only 21 are magnitude or first magnitude stars. So pulled in by Kiss Kiss explanation, I turned my now adjusted eyes to the skies and took in the beauty of the stars of winter. Sirius, Betelgeuse, Procyon, Regal, Pollux, Capella, Aldebaran. Not sure if I pronounced those names right. But not just the well known first magnitude stars either. These skies are littered with stars of all brightness and colors. And they were both beautiful and overwhelming. No, that's not. But anyways, isn't it quite magni magnificent? So Ikari had come up beside me as I stared off into space, listening to Keisuke speak from afar. So I laughed, thinking back on those days. We didn't even know that you could see different stars in different seasons back then. So like what happened? So that deal? It was one night after the three of us had been out a few times before. So I wonder what happened back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. It's cold. There was no big show going on in the skies, and the day to day changes were hardly noticeable. I had grown sick of watching the skies day after day. Plus, I was frozen right down to the bone and couldn't really take it anymore, but then it appeared overhead. So, what was the thing that got them to think twice? We had been busy watching our footing that we hadn't really even checked the skies on our way up. But then up there, with our eyes fully adjusted, we saw the brightest starlight sky we had ever seen. Wow, amazing! So we couldn't help staring upwards, mouths 
agape. And it was like the stars were exponentially brighter than usual, lighting up the whole sky. And the whole sky seemed like a grand illusion. I trembled, not from the cold, but because of a strange fear that rose up inside of me. Well, I think we should stay a little longer because um, we're going to miss the good stuff. Like, um, we came in a little bit early, and that's why we didn't see this at first. So you huddle together to stay warm and continue watching the skies. So I was like, going, well, I'm glad we stayed, even though it was really cold, because we never got to see that kind of sky in our future stargazing activities. So you know, the conditions were just unimaginably perfect that night, or we were so worn out from the climb and the cold that our senses were unusually sharp. And even now, I still didn't, didn't really understand it. But ever since that day, whether we know it or not, we continue to f try and find that sky once more. Oh, so this is before Akito arrives, and... It's like, um... Well, he's missing out on stuff. So, I wonder if they both know when Akito was supposed to get off his shift. Well, I think it's more like Hikari and Saya can't find Akito in this crowd. So I already sent a bunch of texts, but still no replies. And it looked like Hikari was getting Soki for the same reason. So maybe he had to cover Satomi Sensei because of her refusal to work? That's probable. So I think another problem is that the lectures are getting quite long with all the talk and people are getting bored. It's like, um, come on, why can't we do the actual event instead of hearing all your stories and the introduction of astronomy? Oh, okay. So it looks like Everyone is going to wait for Akito to show up. Wow. So, it is quite bad for all the guests that arrived, but it is kind of a big honor that, like, all the organizers, they want Akito to see everything and not be left out. And they should let Akito know about this so that he could try to expedite his way up the mountains rather than so his mind's like well I'll just pop in during the middle of the stargazing event so Anika was busy taking care of our guests and Nare from the Nishi High seemed to be grown impatient though <laughs> well you know I don't know if, he, if he's going to come up here or not so why don't we just start without him and he can just pop in and even if you start, I'm sure you won't miss too much. But it looks like Orihime is also going to wait for Akito. But it's taking too long though. Well, like I said, they should try to text him or call him to see what's up. So I think the problem is that they were anticipating that Akito would be finished with his shift 
in 30 minutes. And now that 30 minutes has passed, they're wondering why he's still uh, not up here yet. Despite I could have been left or let off earlier than usual. So Keisuke gave a wonderful explanation of the constellations and other stars, but people seem to be growing a little restless at the changing skies. And to make it worse, Akira does not answer the phone. And I wonder if they're going to take the next step and actually send someone down the mountains to see where Akito is and whether or not he's still working at that Satome convenience store. So he should have been here already and everyone was getting a little worried. Hikari, still next to me, spoke up. So I checked my phone again, but he still hadn't texted me back. Jeez, uh, would everyone just give me a break here? And unfortunately, I have to stop here for this episode. I noticed that it's getting quite long, and if I continue, it might take even more time to get through the next part. So we'll see what happens once Akito makes it up to the event area. And I wonder what took him so long, despite being let go early from a shift at the Satomi convenience store. So is it because, one, Akito's having trouble making it up to the event area because he's going alone in the middle of the dark through the woods if you remember, Hikari mentioned that it is best to go as a group up the mountains. Or because he got held up at the convenience store while the grandmother looks for her daughter, Miharu, to take over Akito's shift. And I feel that the people in the event area they didn't do much to check on Akito. They only messaged him or called him. And if they noticed that something isn't right, Akito not answering his phone or anything, they could send some people down the mountain and check on Akito and see what's up. So whether or not he's still working there or he needs some help getting up the mountains. And I'm sure Akito has no idea that Everyone is holding up the event for him. But we'll see how it goes and what they're going to see with this Dobson telescope and whether or not it works in the next episode. And with that in mind, I will see you later.